Hi everyone, my name's Ben Ferguson. The research that I'll be presenting today is the development of a surgical planning tool, which is used to inform and guide the decision-making process of a maxillofacial surgeon when they are planning a jawbone reconstruction surgery. This surgical planning methodology is patient-specific and driven by CT imagery, finite element analysis engineering software, and multi-objective optimization algorithms. Putting all this together, the impact of this research is an innovative method of surgical planning that is driven by computer-aided engineering and data optimization. So here is a 3D model of a real human jawbone. Now say if this person experiences bone cancer that needs to be surgically resected, you can see that by removing all of this cancerous tissue, the patient loses a large volume of their jawbone. With advances in tissue engineering and 3D printing, the new frontier of bone reconstruction is to take a CT scan of the patient and then using 3D computer modeling to design and fabricate a 3D printed tissue scaffold. And what we will see is that over time, bone tissue surrounding the scaffold will grow into the scaffold layer by layer. And concurrently, as this bone ingrowth takes place, the scaffold will safely degrade into the bloodstream, ultimately leaving brand new living tissue in its place. Now, let me pose a question. Where is the ideal position to place the titanium fixation plate? Surgeons can face a decision dilemma when they are planning a surgery such as this, because there are many different considerations they must weigh up. On the one hand, they need to ensure that the structure is going to be strong enough to allow the patient to bite down without it breaking. But if the patient is biting down, then the structure also needs to be stiff enough that it won't deform significantly. And then we also need to encourage tissue regeneration via Wolf's Law so the patient can regrow the original structure of their jawbone. When the surgeon is making the decision of where to place the fixation plate, they need to consider multiple objectives. And this is all further complicated by the complex biomechanics of a reconstructed jawbone. So our new surgical planning tool aids the decision-making process for a surgeon. In this presentation, let's demonstrate the use of this surgical planning tool for mandibular reconstruction surgery as if we were all together in the planning room. So in this surgical plan, we're going to optimize the placement of a titanium fixation plate with respect to two design variables, its height and its angle. We'll test 19 different fixation plate positions on the mandible, which correspond to each of the black lines on the right-hand side image. We evaluate each placement according to three design criteria. Firstly, we want to place the fixation plate in such a way so as to maximize the volume fraction of the tissue scaffold experiencing appositional mechanical stimulus under physiological load. So in other words, we want to enhance tissue regeneration inside the scaffold using Wolf's Law. Secondly, we want to minimize peak stress in the scaffold so that it remains intact with a diminished risk of failure. And thirdly, we want to minimize scaffold ridge displacement so that the reconstructed jawbone resists deformation under physiological load. And this is related to the structural stiffness of the system, where a stiffer structure will allow the patient to bite down properly without significant deformation. So firstly, we build a digital twin of the patient's mandible using CT image processing. The computer-aided design models of the tissue scaffold and the 19 different fixation plates are designed to be conformal to the organic shape of this patient's mandible. The 19 models are then transferred to Abacus software for finite element analysis to simulate biting. The first notable feature of this model is the homogenization of the tissue scaffold structure to significantly decrease the computational load of the FE model. The homogenous structure is assigned equivalent material properties to that of its porous structure, with the material properties determined using numerical compression tests on a periodic lattice. The base material is a bioceramic called strontium HT garnite. The porous structure of the scaffold is based upon the Schwartz P surface, 
which we found to have desirable mechanical and permeability properties suitable for bone tissue regeneration. The second notable feature of our model is the inclusion of a thin soft tissue layer between the host bone and each side of the scaffold. This soft tissue layer is representative of early phase osseointegration following implantation of the scaffold and prior to the substantial ingrowth of bony tissues into the scaffold that occurs later in the osseointegration process. So let's run this finite element model and visualize some of the results. So firstly, when comparing a reconstructed mandible with an intact one, we see that reconstruction significantly changes the strain energy density distribution within and around the scaffold host bone construct. And we also observe stress shielding of the titanium fixation plate. Next, we can visualize the distributions of strain energy density and distributions of mechanical stimulus for bone remodeling in the tissue scaffold with different placements of the fixation plate. The mechanical stimulus S driving bone remodeling in the tissue scaffold is the strain energy density per unit apparent tissue scaffold density. So we can see that the amount of red in the tissue scaffold mechanical stimulus images, which are shown in the middle of the slide, corresponds to appositional mechanical stimulus, which is what we want. The more red, the more we fulfill objective one. The key findings are that the major load transfer mechanism to the tissue scaffold volume is via the fixation system. This makes sense since we are simulating early phase osseointegration and the soft tissue interface is dampening load transfer between the host bone and the scaffold. Our second key finding is that raising the height of the fixation plate increases the volume fraction of appositional mechanical stimulus in the tissue scaffold. And thirdly, our peak stress findings show that all peak stress locations in all 19 models occurred in the region of the hole where the neck of the screw is in contact with the scaffold. The maximum peak stress value measured was 2.5 megapascals, which is much weaker by a factor of 40 than the ultimate material strength of the bioceramic material. So far, we've demonstrated that the position of the fixation plate has a profound effect on the biomechanical response of the reconstructed jawbone under physiological load. Now we'll use surrogate modeling methods to generate response surfaces of each objective using bivariate cubic polynomial functions. So firstly, we see that placing the fixation plate low down leads to the least desirable mechanical stimulus conditions for tissue regeneration. However, placing the plate higher up leads to more desirable mechanical stimulus conditions for tissue regeneration. The opposite occurs with the peak stress objective. Placing the plate higher up leads to a higher risk of mechanical failure of the scaffold, while placing the plate lower down has a lower risk of mechanical failure of the scaffold. Finally, the reconstructed mandible has less desirable ridge displacement, i.e. less structural stiffness to allow for biting, when the plate is positioned along the lower third of the mandible. But when placed higher up, there is less ridge displacement, and so the patient is able to bite down without large deformation of the structure. Placing the fixation plate along the upper boundary will prevent separation of the tissue scaffold and host bone, particularly on the posterior side. So this is why we see better structural stiffness when the plate is placed at the top. From a surgical planning perspective, our design objectives are competing with one another. So rather than a surgeon trying to weigh up these competing criteria, we use a multi-objective particle swarm optimization algorithm to aid the surgeon in determining the optimal solution. The algorithm determines a Pareto front of optimal solutions, as shown on the left-hand side image but we want to find the most optimal of these solutions, representing the best trade-off between the different competing design objectives. This is determined by minimizing a cost function shown on the slide. And when we plot this most optimal point back into design space, this corresponds to a plate height of 20 millimeters and a small depression angle of minus three and a half degrees. So this is where computer-aided surgical planning would recommend the fixation plate be placed. 
So thanks so much for listening. And also a big thank you to my Jawsome research team.